In this video, we'll walk through some of the things you need to know about Visual Studio Code in order to get started with this course. First of all, what is this program? Visual Studio Code is an integrated development environment, also called an IDE. And this is a fancy phrase for a program that contains a lot of tools for developers to use as they're writing programs. One of the ways you can think of an IDE is an IDE is to programming as, say, a word processor is to writing. There are a lot of built-in tools to help you along the way, but we're going to primarily be focused on two of them in this course. The first is our program editor, and this is where you will write your code. It's going to do things like highlight your syntax in specific color codings such that it's really easy to tell well, what is a code comment, what is a string, what are the built-in uh, keywords of the programming language, and you'll get used to seeing your code highlighted in some way, and this makes it easier to read. The program editor is going to do syntax checking and make sure that what you're writing is actually valid code. The other tool we'll make use of is the terminal. This will allow us to run some commands we need to get our programming project started, and we'll talk more about the terminal later in the course. When you start Visual Studio Code, you may not see the course materials that you expect. This is easy to remedy. After you've gotten set up for the course, if you need to get back to the course project, what you'll do is you go to File, Open Recent, and then look for the topmost entry that looks like the right folder for this course. You click on that. If you do not see your files, then you can try toggling the File Explorer pane. So for example, if I click this button multiple times, you'll see that this pane pops in and out. Once our course materials are open, you should see an SRC folder here. And if you click SRC, you might see a list of directories. Uh, and for now, when we get started, there's only this welcome directory in it. What you're seeing in the File Explorer are directories on your computer and files on your computer as well. The next thing we need to do is open the terminal. So we'll go to the View menu and select Terminal. And you'll see this pane pop open. If you do not see Bash here, we need to set up your VS Code so that it does use it. You can start by pressing this trash icon, which will remove this pane. And what we'll do is we'll go to View and then Command Palette. From here, you'll want to type in the word Terminal and select Default Shell is what you want to click on. So you'll click on that, and you should see some options. On Windows, the option that you'll want to choose is Git Bash. On Mac, you should just see a regular entry for Bash. Once that's done, if we go back to View Terminal, we should see Bash is set up as our terminal. If you have any problems with this, come and see us in office hours. Once the terminal is open, there are two commands you're going to frequently run in this course. You'll type them into the terminal and press Enter. You may see some warnings when you run these. You can ignore the warnings. So the first command that we're going to run will download all of the latest course materials and get them set up so that we're ready to go. The way that we will do that is with npm run pull. Pull means download. It's going to install what we need, and we are good to go. The next thing that we will need to run to get started is npm start. npm start is a command that will begin our development environment. So if I type npm start and press enter, it's going to move through a few steps. And suddenly, I should see in my web browser open up this Introduction to Computer Science page. We're going to encourage you to organize your windows such that your web browser is on the right and your code editor and VS Code are on the left. We can hide to this panel by clicking the X. If Chrome is not your default web browser that opened up when you ran npm start, we would encourage you to choose Chrome as your default web browser. You'll want to run these commands before lecture and before watching new videos or starting a new project, because along the way, we'll be distributing new materials to work through as examples. So let's talk through the project structure that we're seeing in VS Code. Your source code will be stored in the source folder and organized in a specific way. There are going to be subfolders within source, and each of those is going to be what we call a project. So each problem set is going to have its own project, and you'll see that lectures and videos will also have their own project to help keep our work through this course organized. Within a project, there might be one or more app files. This is any file that ends in dash app.ts, and the ts indicates that this is a TypeScript file, so we can write our TypeScript code into one of these files. 
As you can see here, we have in the source folder, this OO welcome folder, and inside of it, we see a welcome app. So this corresponds in our development server to the OO welcome project and the welcome app. If I hide my file explorer for just a moment, you can see that when I click on welcome, we see that welcome to comp 110 is printed out. And here's the program that made that happen. In the next video, we'll talk through what each of these lines means. For now, just assume that the only code that you're seeing running is this right here. Welcome to comp 110. When we make changes to a file in VS Code, for example, if I replace this with uh, hello world, you'll notice that after changing a line, nothing happened immediately in my browser. And that's because we are working in the form of a stored program in VS Code. We haven't saved the changes in this file. And one of the ways that you can tell that we haven't saved the changes is by looking for a little icon in the tab of the file that you're editing. In this case, it's right here. So this dot that you're seeing is an indication that this, this file has unsaved changes in it. And as soon as I save this file, and I can do that by going to the file menu and selecting save, and you'll notice that that dot became an X. You will also notice that as soon as I save that file, my program in the development environment refreshed and reran from the very beginning. And now it says, hello world. If I added some exclamation points here and saved again, this time using the shortcut for saving a file, which is Control S on Windows and Command S on Mac. You'll notice that as soon as I press those keys and, and saved it, the development environment refreshed and our new program was run. When you're ready to close out of VS Code and you want to stop your development server, there are two ways of going about this. The best way and the simplest way is probably to go to the View menu and select the terminal and press the trash can icon. This will cause the development server to stop. The other way of doing it is if, you're, if your development server is open, you can hover over this close button in the top right corner. And as soon as you press that, it closes the development environment and you can safely exit your web browser and VS Code. And that's it. Now we can begin working on stored programs in the programming language TypeScript and continue on with this course.